we haven't done a segment. We haven't done this one big thing segment because we were focusing on the on you know participants in the uh, Global Health Span Summit for 114, which was excellent. Um, ended up being in you know Riyadh for 10 days or so. You had to do the quick trip over and back because you've been over there so frequently. Um, and you know, coming back from the trip, I was sort of wading through all the things that actually happened. And as we said, it's like a fire hose, just amazing. I mean, Saudi, while, while I was there, Saudi won its bid for the Expo 2030, which we'll talk about in Yella. COP28 had begun and was ongoing, and there's a lot of news coming out there. Saudi Arabia announced its budget for 2024. Saudi confirmed a 30-year tax incentive for RHQ participants. Kadia was, quote, unquote, relaunched. I mean, just, uh, just you know, a constant flow of big deals. And, but the reason I mentioned it was because the, the item I liked best, uh, you know, among all this news flow was a report by Bloomberg and others noting that, that quote, for the first time, unquote, Saudi Arabia says some Vision 2030 projects will be delayed, which I guess is an interesting choice of what I liked. Um, let me read from that, if I can, that Bloomberg, Bloomberg article, just to give you the, the, the context. So this is all directly from the article here. Um, Saudi Arabia has delayed uh, past 2030 some of the projects launched as part of its economic transformation plan. In the first admission that the kingdom is having to shift the timeline for meeting the goals of the multi-trillion dollar program, the government, which is forecasting budget deficits every year out to 2026, has decided on the extension to build capacity and avert huge inflationary pressures and supply bottlenecks. This is according to Finance Minister Mohammed Al Jadan, who I will say is one of my favorite ministers because he's just relentlessly capable. He didn't specify which projects would be affected. Um, he he noted a longer period is needed to quote build factories, build even uh, sufficient human resources. And he adds the delay, or rather the extension of some projects will serve the economy. Um, after determining how much borrowing was acceptable, the government well, went back to its review of the timeline of projects. This is al Jajan speaking. And all plans had been reviewed based on, quote, economic, social employment, economic, social employment, and quality of life returns, among other factors, over the last 18 months. Uh, as a result, some are, quote, being accelerated and some largely projects in the pipeline which have not been announced yet are being given a longer executional time frame unquote there are quote there are strategies that have been postponed and there are strategies that will be financed after 2030 unquote so why why am i excited about a delay in vision 2030 projects um as you know lucian we talk about on the 966 that we applaud saudi arabia's current deficit spending to in essence to keep the momentum going on these large key large projects and you know economic diversification and and you know in fact they can do this. Um, the finance ministry recently projected that public debt will reach about twenty six percent of the economic output by the end of twenty twenty four the end of next year which is this is a comparatively low level by global standards. Uh, so they can do this for a time, but. You know, moving now to adjust investments and make choices regarding major projects is just fundamentally sensible. And um, what what I I think one of the things one of the hallmarks about the Vision Twenty Thirty that I have most appreciated, um, especially in well, if you consider the fact that what you hear about Vision Twenty Thirty is you know incredibly ambitious nature of the vision the the very hard charging and keep pushing approach of the crown prince. But I think what they've done well is adapt actually and be open to adjustments and alterations. And you saw this early. You, you, you remember the national transformation program. There's, there was a one and a two. The first one was just overly ambitious, was out of line. They really couldn't implement it. They went back and redid it. Uh, and a lot of the regulatory reform, you see them to, you know, uh, you know, one, two steps up, one step back, sort of, trying to figure it out, refine it, remove it. You even see this in RHQ as it's evolved. You've seen it in uh, Nitakat, which precedes Vision 2030. But a lot of their regular forms, uh, regulatory reforms have been uh, refined as a result of pushback and feedback. So 
in any exercise, stretching or adjusting timelines or investment cycles are required. And so this, to me, does a couple of things. One, it recognizes the obvious. Yes, Saudi Arabia can deficit spend, but it can't do it indefinitely. You have to make choices. Um, yes, Saudi Arabia, as it gets into these projects, understands that some make sense, others make less sense. Some will move at this pace, some will move at a quicker pace. And we see this happening. And it's a comment, it's it's a theme sort of we've had on the show. I really like it when things start moving the target date off of 2030. Because 2030 is not the terminal of this whole project. 2030 is not the final exam. You're going to have to have a, you know, you're going to have a checkup at that point. Um, you might call it a midterm, but whatever it is, it's not the, the final grade doesn't happen in 2030. 2030 is the direction you're headed. It's not the grade you're going to get when you get there. And so the, the, actually the, the quote from Minister Al John that I love the most was, um, and I think I, I appreciate it because it, it reflects the fact that they're making hard decisions is here's the quote is uh, certain projects can be expanded for three years. So it's 2033. Some will be expanded to 2035. And some will be expanded even beyond that. And some will be rationalized, unquote. I love the term rationalized. I think it's fiscal code word for disappeared. Um, if, you're, if your project is rationalized, I guess you look for another project. Um, <laughs> but, but uh, you know, so I, I, again, out of all the news, I love it. We talk, we always talk about implementation. You know, we, we understand the goals of Vision 2030. We see the announcements, but we always talk about implementation. Implementation requires adjustment and decisions, you know, and they have to, they have to marry the reality on the ground with the, the financing available, the debt that they can sustain. And, and doing it now uh, is, is, is important because it, it lends credibility. It keeps the dialogue open and transparent. And uh, I just think it was an important step and a meaningful, a meaningful moment for Saudi Arabia in this transition. Yeah, this is a good one. And, and we almost basically chose the same subject for the one big thing with all the things going on. I mean, mine was going to be a slightly different take. Um, and when we conferred on this before the show, it was just funny because I was like, wait, that's kind of what I was thinking about doing with it as a different tack. But I think this is a really good one and an important one. And just, I completely agree with everything you said. I thought you were going to choose as your favorite quote from Al Jadan, the one at the very bottom of this article. Um, and I would have bet money you would have chosen this. Cho uh, you would have chosen this, but he said, quote, optimizing spending is not only about reducing spending, it's about the best way to use resources in order to achieve optimal returns. And I just think that that is so smart because it's like, hey, look, we had this plan at the beginning, <clears throat> 2016, this thing's been in the work for forever. We have the 2030 date. We just need you to focus less and less on that 2030 date and understand that we're going to make some adjustments along the way. This is smart, like full yeah. stop. This is not just, oh, we're sort of, you know, figuring things out on the fly. It's we're seven years into this thing. These are all carefully planned things that are that they are adjusting to be smart. They're not going to make foolish decisions because they said something seven years ago. And, you know, I think it's interesting. Some things are taking longer because of logistical bottlenecks. I think the article points that out. You know, mm -hmm. some of these projects are so big, they're going to take some more time to build. And then some things just don't make sense anymore. I mean, things have changed. Oil prices go up and down. Regardless of that, it's like, well, maybe we don't need this anymore. I mean, no one really expected the 108th mile of the line to be done on 20, you know, December 2029. <clears throat> but what I think is, what I agree with you about, especially here is 2030 is a date. It's a medical checkup. I think that's a great term. And since then, you know, since, since two weeks ago, we learned about the expo soon. I think we're going to have official confirmation of the world cup. Those things weren't in the cards when vision 2030 was announced. That's going to be some big, both of those are going to be a lot of money, maybe not Kadia money or the lion money, but those things will be huge spends. The Saudi government is making adjustments accordingly. So I think this is a really good one. Yeah, they're talking 8 billion for, for the World Expo at least. Um, 
But yeah, 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 I can understand that that quote. I just couldn't get past. I love that. I love the rationalized quote. I just thought that that was so that was so minister of financey, you know, in terms of saying, well, you know, sorry, sir, your project may be rationalized. Yeah, hey, this was funny. I was sending this article around too when it first came out because I was like, you know, this shows a level of maturity and sort of. I mean, it's it's this is like grown up finance minister behavior. He was not, by the way, at the FII in Hong Kong. This These comments were made back in Riyadh, which was interesting. When I first heard this, I was like, oh, he's making these comments at the FII thing in Hong Kong. And indeed, he was actually in, in Riyadh making these comments. So it, it is interesting. Um, we, I was looking at Kadia because I was interested in when the Jack Nicholas golf course is going to be yeah. ready. And I was Googling that. And I was aware that there was a, a story, and you mentioned it earlier, that you know, Kadia is going to be kind of relaunched and there is no end date. It is a massive undertaking and it's far away from Riyadh. It's 40 kilometers from Riyadh city center, but it's also not just like a theme park. It's like a theme park city with golf and F1 and all these other things going on and, you know, residential developments. But I was looking into that and I was saying, you know, Hey, like when is this Jack Nicholas golf course coming to Riyadh? And the only thing that I can find online for it is that it should be ready by the end of 2022, <laughs> which has come and gone and there <laughs> is no golf course. And that's OK. You know, I, I, that was sort of a ridiculous promise anyway from the the uh, developers of that. But look, I mean, it doesn't mean that it's not coming. It doesn't mean that they aren't working on it. We know they are. Things are being adjusted accordingly. And like you said and, and hinted at as well, I mean, they, they were probably pretty surprised that the tourism numbers were as high as they were. Sure. They didn't expect to revise those upwards. And many outsiders said, hey, you're never going to hit 100 million tourists, guys. I don't know why you're putting that out there as 2030's goal. And 2024 is almost here. They're almost there. They're revising those upwards. So you got to adjust the sales. That's what the realist does. So, yeah, And I would add, I would you know, add to that you mentioned, we've talked about sensibility and that's right. I think a lot of this comes with confidence. I think they feel, you know, they've projected out their costs to 2030 and probably beyond. Um, they are in a good position in terms of debt. You know, they don't carry a lot of debt as compared to the globe and a lot of other countries. I mean, you don't, you, you want to, you want to keep that limited as, as much as possible, but they have room and, and their debt has been attractive. They have no problem placing debt. And, um, so, you know, their feeling is we can continue to do this. You know, we'll we'll continue to deficit spend, but uh, you know, concurrently we will make rational decisions about projects and and and, and adjust timelines and and tweak uh, you know goals and that sort of thing. So it's great. I love it. It's it's confidence. It's sensible. It's um it's it's good governance. Mm -hmm.